Okay. Well, I've been gone for the last week, two sessions in a row, because I was very, very sick. Um, I was sick for many reasons. Um, the first reason was physically. I had strep throat. The second thing is that I've been been harassed, and I'm not even talking about just the regular harassment of, of YouTube comments. People are getting really personal. And I was coming to a point where I was getting ready to quit completely. I was getting ready to stop doing these weekly meets. I know that you guys would hate that, and I know all my viewers would hate that. My viewer content, like my channel content, would decrease significantly. Um, and obviously that's a rash choice, but it was, it came to a point where I considered it. So you must imagine how bad it was. This person would contact me 15 messages every single day on Facebook. He thought that, I don't know, he was my boyfriend or something. And it was really, really disturbing and really creepy. It creeped me the fuck out. And I wasn't comfortable. And I try to establish sort of like a professional relationship, even though I might joke or I might swear. You know, there's still a level, level of respect. Go ahead and bash my videos. Say I'm a fucking shitty ass teacher. Say I don't know how to teach. Like, criticize my teaching as much as you want with as vulgar language as you want to criticize me with. But as for, like, harassing me on a personal level like that, talking to me every single day under the guise that you're interested in my private tutoring or that you're interested in my classes or that you really want to you want to learn and you know that I help people so you know I naturally will accept you as a student even just on Facebook with some minor consultations and like a sentence here that, that that's what that person snuck in with and it was really creepy and I had to ban them and I, I usually don't ban someone unless they're like calling me a cunt and that I should go to hell like that's when I start banning someone but um, and that actually did happen but this person was on a whole other level and it was disgusting and I want to ask you guys officially, I'm not going to cut this out of the YouTube recording. I'm going to ask you guys to stop. I am your friend. I, I really am your friend in, in art, but that's it. And it felt like I was being, like, I don't know, it felt really weird. I don't know how to describe it really. I know I can't even compare it to, you know, being groped or being talked to like that, but it felt creepy. It felt legit creepy. It was like two weeks of that. It was disgusting. I, don't, I guess I'm an introvert in, in a way, and having someone talk to me like that so disrespectfully every single day, calling me sweetie, calling me honey, like, ew, man, fuck off. Like, for sorry, for lack of a better term, does that sound so polite all the time? Like, fuck off. I don't know you that way. So don't talk to me that way. It's disgusting. Um, and it's disrespectful. And if you only knew me through my classes, then you'd know I expect professional like behavior from, from you. So don't ever th assume that I might be okay with it. I'll never be okay with it. Uh, the second thing is I was streaming the other day and people, a lot of people, were complaining that I wasn't uploading all my streams that I, when I paint. Um, why, why is it that you know I upload hours and hours of content and someone has the audacity to come on my channel while I'm streaming personal work, while I'm busy, like just away at my personal work, streaming it just for, you know, so that you guys can be a part of my process. Like these people just complain, really demanding. And after all the content I put up and all the time I spend in the videos and the sessions, you know, these people expect more content. I mean, unless you've watched every single one of my videos, you shouldn't be expecting any more content than that. You know, unless you've watched, taken advantage of every hour that I've offered, I charge $50 an hour for private tutoring. So put that together. That's how much you guys are getting, you know, scot-free. <laughs> so I'm not charging anybody for that. And I know it's a lot that I charge for, but it's for people who want to pay, who want it to be a very personal, intimate process in their own development. They don't want it to be a public event. And that's fine. People who don't want to show other people, other people their work. I understand that's why people pay. But I upload a lot of stuff for free. And a lot of the same stuff that I teach in my private tutoring. Um, but it might be a little more general, but that's only because everyone's watching. Everyone has their own issues. Unless you've watched every single one of those videos that I've offered you, you have no place to ask me for more content. It's really un uh, disrespectful. Again, I've just been experiencing that, and it's led me to come to that unfortunate conclusion. That f conviction behind it is very unfortunate in having to consider leaving the stream completely. I, I, I don't know, I've just been meaning to burn all my bridges, honestly. I've been really, really tired of dealing with that. I wonder, am I going to be dealing with it like five years from now? Am I going to still be dealing with this? Just because I'm a girl, and I'm going to go out and say it, it's the elephant in the fucking room. There is no guy 
who's going to be harassed like this. I don't care what kind of gender studies courses you've taken. If you're a guy who's streaming, if you're Ali Abudi or whatever the fuck his name is on YouTube, he's not going to be harassed by some weird-ass perv ask, calling him sweetie every single day and me politely asking after three times, please stop. You know, it's only because I'm a girl. Like, God knows, if I showed my face, I'd be harassed every single day. People would be riding my dick all day long. And I, I, I can't handle that. And I've really wanted to show my face. I've really wanted to come on video and um, talk to you guys so you guys can meet me. It feels like I'm just a voice that you guys aren't really, haven't really met me. And I want you guys to meet me because it's my channel. It's like my home. It's your home. We all just gather here and, and do art. So that made me reconsider doing this entire thing. That made me reconsider the internet completely. Like I remember telling Abu, I don't want to be on the internet anymore. I'm so sick of the internet because of those people. They think just because of the anon anonymity it offers that they can talk to people like that. It's really creepy. If you're a girl in the audience, you probably, maybe the guys don't understand what I mean, but it's creepy. It's really creepy. It makes you think, you know, what other mean they're trying to find you. And that's really what bothers me. So I, I wanted to express those. I'm not going to delete them off the YouTube post. I'm going to make sure that's out there for everyone to hear it if they watch my videos. I will try to post my streams up. I heard you loud and clear. I'll try to post my streams up, but the reason why I don't post them up is because I listen to music that is copyrighted. That if I upload it again after stream, you know, unless I edit it and quiet it out and speed up the process, then I'll upload it again. But usually when I do that and I go the extent of doing that, I post it on Patreon for those who are paying, you know, supporting me like that. That's who I give that content for. And I don't just time lapse it. I talk over it. I give commentary on what I did when I painted it, when I was sketching. So that's, that's, that's Patreon exclusive. And I'll try my best to bring in more content. But really, other than those two massive hours I offer weekly, um, I think that's more than enough. Some channels offer one video a week at five minutes each. And we're hitting 200. So I'm not... In a, in a position where I'm lacking, I think, at least in my opinion. I don't feel like I'm not giving out enough content. I feel like I am giving out content. And I'm repeating principles and fundamentals on every single video. So every single video I feel, I hope, is saturated with lots of knowledge for you guys to, to take advantage of. So that's it, really. I'm sorry that I took the time to do this after a week's break. It's, it was both me being sick of that and me being sick of everything all at the same time. I just wanted to vent to you guys. Thanks for listening. But um, I haven't uh, read your, your videos. Um, I'm a gay man and I get harassed in public all the time, especially with my boyfriend. Sometimes I don't want to leave my house. I understand. That sometimes after that week, I, I just didn't want to talk to anybody. It was so weird. It was so disturbing and annoying. Um, it's your channel. You decide what you show, specific, especially if it's your job and what you live off of. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, it is, I like to say that it is for you guys, that's why I do it, for those who are struggling, who don't have money, who want to just get out there and learn something, but, you know, as for coming on my video and just, like, mob mentality, it was like mob mentality, it was like, yo, why do you delete your streams, I've never seen, like, it doesn't make sense, why do you delete your streams, it was really, really, I felt like if I had been, have had that last little bit and they just pushed me that last little bit I had of patience that week. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, yeah, says next time someone disrespects you like that, they're catching a drop kick to my to the face by me. I wish, <laughs> I wish there was a button for yeah, yeah to drop kick someone. <clears throat> but um, yeah, thank you, Mark. <laughs> I knew, you, I know you got my back. But thanks everyone. Um, thanks a lot. All right, so this app has recently been updated. Portrait Studio is the program software that we've been developing for the last six months, and I think more than that. And basically, it is a learning and um, sort of painting tool uh, that helps you discover, help, gives you control over the camera, gives you control over the light sources, and gives you control over the model. So not only can you change the model, um, wait, 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 female, high, you can randomize the model, change it however you like if you want to set specific things that you want to change, the size of the ears, anything that gives you control over the model. So it's the three things that we need control of as artists. But recently we've updated it. It's something that I've been promising you guys. And it is the low polys of the models. So it's very, very similar. It's inspired by the Asaro head technique, the way they've modeled those Asaro heads. But if you, I think, just go online and search for an Asaro head, <clears throat> 
Um, they run for like $80, $60 um, a piece. And it's only one gender as, as far as I've seen. I'm not sure where I found the, I think it was on eBay. Um, sorry, one sec. Let me just see how much it is on eBay. But that's what basically what, what, was, what inspired us. Um, um, is that uh, $70 for one Asaro head that's a male and in this app it's like half that price and it's both male and female and you get full control and the reason why this is so important is because you're learning the planes of the face you're learning about core shadows you're learning about um, when you block in those initial 50, uh, 15 minutes of the painting you're blocking in um, that's really the most important part of the painting if you've ever watched my videos that's my mantra basically I'm always repeating that you have to keep your brush large you have to keep your mind on the on the light source you have to keep your eye on the ball <laughs> I'm joking that was so bad I'm so sorry um, but yeah that this is really what it's all about and when I brought in the Asaro heads um, and they're more like less limited by the Asaro head more low poly um, and high poly of course you have the full model um, to your to your disposal at your disposal and you can turn off the lights you can have one light source and you're really experimenting uh, a lot you have a lot of control over your referencing my recent painting that I've been working on um, this one I used the Asaro I mean not the Asaro heads um, not the low poly I mean I used the uh, I used Portrait Studio to help me start this painting out I really don't like that painting by the way um, but yeah I hope that whoever bought this, uh, there is an app, I mean there is an update uh, for the app, so don't forget to update so you can get the new stuff. And there's another update tonight that is coming with the universal light, so it's going to come with light settings that display a morning light setting for like dusk or, or sunset, um, and uh, I think day t uh, like midday and really bright sun, and then you get to control the color, color of the light source, so the sunlight. Um, lots and lots of features, different kinds of light sources. You get pin light, and then I think you get directional light, which is like basically a universal light source. Um, I have a video on this available if you want to change the color of the background um, to kind of get in a more uh, kind of specific light source situation, how strong the light source is. So this feels like more of a dominant light source in the room, and this is more of a small light. I talk about this a lot, the color of the room uh, or the light source in the room. But yeah, uh, there's an update for this. I'm happy that everyone seems to be accepting these these high poly, low polys. I'm um, I'm loving them. Our model did an our modeler did an amazing job. But yeah, if you guys want to buy it, it's available on PayPal and I mean it's available on Selfie if you want to buy it with PayPal and it's available on my website. But you can just go to Instagram.com and it'll be there if you're interested in it. Let's talk about some 14-day challenges. It's been so long since I've spoken about a 14-day challenge. It's really weird. I don't know why I've delayed it so long, but I did want to open Portrait Studio up again one more time. Oops, that's my painting. Um, let me start with the 14 days and talk a little bit about the planes of the face. Kind of like stick to the theme of the low polys that we've recently updated or uploaded. Um, basically, the biggest issue that I find, who, who here is doing a 14-day challenge? Um, uh, you know, just I know there's some people uploading it on the on the community, but who here's taking it on? Um, we've got Shao taking it on Candle, um, Leia Lay. I love theirs. I can't wait to see how theirs ends. Ok, Ot, Otakat, Candle actually did another one. Um, I think Jennifer. Lots of people. I think Benjamin. Yeah, 14 days. Lots of people are taking it on, um, and it's really challenging. You, you, it's a challenge for a reason because it's 14 days of drawing the same exact face. You're going to learn issues. Like for instance, this person right here. Why did I close it? Uh, this person here. Um, my first critique of their work was that they were using too much black. Let's go back to a, an old version of theirs. Where is it? Come on, come in. All right, right here. Lots and lots of black, and my initial critique of this was don't use so much black and don't use so much white. Um, because this really represents our dependency on contrast in order to create a render. Um, but as you saw just now in the way, how many lights went into diffusing all of that. So in Portrait Studio, I opened up three lights. I turned on all three lights till we got that gray tone. We had zero, almost no blacks left behind. And when you can really see a face like this, there are some blacks left behind, but these are in very specific areas called the the dark spots and we have to get 
a hold of these first before we darken anything or lighten anything else because can anyone explain why it's so important to establish how dark you have to go I'll wait for the answer let me just darken these why is it important to determine how dark you're gonna go for the duration of the painting after you have set up this clean gray plate why is it so crazy important to choose how dark you're ever going to go on the face? Especially if you're painting grayscale. Can anyone answer? Oh yes, you can on the website. You can submit bugs, you can, you can uh, submit suggestions and everything for Portrait Studio. But I'm just going to wait for the answers. I'm sure someone's writing one. <laughs> Right, right. All right, so I'm going to continue on. The hairline of the waterline isn't the entire area. Like the way you drew it, um, it was the entire area. You filled the entire area up. And this comes from a line dependency, like a history of line dependency. See, this whole area is a full black. But then you got a lot better using less and less black, but then it just completely almost disappeared. The black almost completely disappeared from the painting. Um, I need to see it again, but I need to see it only in the areas that it's supposed to be. And this waterline here, hair can be very dark, can have a very dark pigment to it. So this, you can get away with the, with the water, or the lash line, the hairline on the, on the lashes, on the, on the eyelid, and a little bit over here. You also have to, there's a technique that I teach um, called the cave. I don't think I've talked about it in a while, but basically you're shrinking your brush and as you shrink your brush you bring in more paint. And then after you do that, create a nice clean edge where there is no blending on one side on the side of the cave. You actually can feel like you can go in here, you can walk into this because it feels like a real a depth, a real cave, and that's how you're supposed to do the nostrils, and that's how you use dark spots. That's how you use the blackest black um, possible in a painting, by gradually introducing it with a smaller, smaller brush, because you're slowly running out of black. And that's how you should always be painting, like you're running out of that black, because what black does is it floods out the form. Let's see what anyone answered. So you know the what the range of grays you can use in an image? Values, dark spots, settle the form. You put the dark spots first, so you establish, establish form and value range. Excellent! The missing clause in that with respect to skin tones. Skin tones exist in a very, very bright area in the, in the spectrum. They're between a yellow and a brown and an orange. So those are really, really light values right there, um, or light beige, not brown. Um, like unless it's an actual deliberately dark skin, um, it's like a genetic darkly dark skin. That's the only time you're really using no man's land blacks, but uh, not even no man's land. I mean, you don't even have to use black blacks. You can use it right around here, and this will work just fine for like a, a Nubian skin tone. But this is how I want you to use your black. So uh, instead of typing it up, I decided I'm just going to show you during critique hour, because you're hitting your second try or your third try after using that much black and it's time for a demonstration. All right. The most important thing really about the eye anatomy is that shadow line. We really need the shadow of the upper eyelid. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at the before and after, just after this point. One more thing that I'm going to do. I just need more anatomy in the eye so it feels more real. All right, so before, after, very, very washed out before, and that's because the black wasn't there to establish the value range, as Emmanuel uh, pointed out. It really needs to be there. Now, I'm going to open up Portrait Studio and set up kind of the same light source that you have here, which is basically top down, but a little bit more in front than top. Um, Okay, so let me set up a basic model, let me load one, I deleted it, uh, okay, let me turn on some more light sources, okay, so it's coming up from this direction and I want it to move along the z-axis. Let me turn off the second one or move the second one in the exact same position. 
oops, but below, just to diffuse, maybe on the side a little bit. And then make sure this one's intensity is way less than this one. This one's just diffusing just a little. Okay, so what happens is in your version, what's missing basically? What's missing is that this entire, the road of light across the face, let's try a more bony face. Let's see if it gives us a bony ass face. Once it randomizes like a nice face for me, I usually just start editing it. We still need to bring in a control Z. These are hilarious. Oh, that's so cute, like an elf. All right, so let's make a really, really bony face because it's really not gonna show unless I make it super bony. Uh, cheek height a little higher. You see this bright bit? I'm gonna brighten this up. You see where that major road, that contrast on the cheeks? It travels beneath the eye and connects to these upper areas here. These are the light bits. These are the light spots that I always talk about. These areas, if you're working with this basic, really popular light situation for portraiture, you have to make sure that you have these spots. You have these all illuminated because the geography of the face always has those areas illuminated first. This is so pretty. Um, so just to take a look at the cheekbones from the side view, really, really bony. Uh, space bar to, to reset. So even if, like when we bring it to the most bony state, we can see the the real sharp. If it's if it's more fatty, what happens is that we catch that less. So maybe your reference was a little bit of a chunky face, and what happened is you kind of lose it because your face, the face your face you painted, is a little chunky. A little, you know, a little marshmallows in their cheeks. But when you really make the face bony and get rid of all that fat and that gradient that's getting rid of that road, that road of light that travels like this big on switch, the C shape and then the line across the T zone. That's what you have to have, that's what you have to build up. So in your image, we're missing both the dark darks and this 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 road of light, this this root, which happens right this like right across the nose, on either side of the nose. And that's what that's that's the biggest shape of the of the entire face area is the head, and that's what we're illuminating. Okay, so okay, so I'm just adding in more than I need, and what I'm going to do is just like my reference just showed me, I'm going to try to bring in the darks only where I need them. This is only one light source. If I illuminated this a little more. If I brought in a second light from the side and illuminated that just a little extra, then it would diffuse. See, it wouldn't be as dark as, as this. And these are pin lights. The universal light is still in the update that's coming up tonight. And you'll see that there are no blacks in a universal light, almost none, because it's such a powerful light source. So you're good not using black completely, but it's also not a good idea to avoid it um, in the, on, on, on the areas where it's needed, on the dark spots. These areas are actual either by pigmentation or actual cavities, and I'll add the rest in in a sec. All right, so I'm just bringing in a little bit more structure. You can afford to bring in a little bit of structure for this because it's a 14-day challenge. It's just testing your anatomy knowledge. It's testing a lot. It's testing your blending for 14 days straight, you know, three hours a day. It's not easy. So I'm just going to show you, just by using this exact method, where to use the dark darks in the nostril. So usually what students do is this, and I know you guys do this because I've seen this. You think that just because it's a dark spot vicinity, dark spot vicinity, that it, you can just plop the black right in there. No, the black is a, is a word used to describe a depth and an altitude. So if this word here, if this, if this, what's it called? If this tone, if this level was a word for this valley, and this was a word for this valley, or actually let's say this one, then we can't use the same word to describe this valley with this level. Get it? This area, outer area of the nostril, isn't as deep as the deepest part of the nostril. If you're going to use a word to describe a word meaning the value. If you're going to use a value to describe this deep, deep area, you cannot, you should not use, and it does not work in the real world either, this is a rule of physics, 
you do not use that that same valley to describe a much less steep valley. Does everyone understand? It's kind of really complicated to teach, um, complicated to understand, really to grab a hold of, but really it just comes with, with application, just understanding that you know when you're painting you can't use the same values for different levels. You simply can't. That's why it's not a good idea to just bring in that black and plop it anywhere you want on the portraiture, on the portrait. There's a specific set of words, like for instance, this value, this value, this value, and this value are all speaking the same depth. It's impossible. One of these areas is not like the other. Meaning, this area is deeper. It's got a more fat jumbled around it. And you don't outline the lips with light. Don't do that. I'm going to get dark and layer to show you exactly what that is. This whole beard, this beard, you don't touch this beard. Don't touch the beard. This is a beard. I call this the beard. It's the it's the core shadow, the very first original ancient core shadow that came with the sphere of the head. It's the original core shadow. It's it's as it's 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 an ancient core shadow that you can't mess around with. Alright? Areas that exclude this core shadow that are not included in this massive dark area is as we see in our reference. Oh no no no. As we've seen our reference, it's because I have two light sources on. Let me turn this off and this off. You see this whole beard right here? The exclusions are the upper lip, the chin. This girl's chin isn't that strong. Let me try, let me find the chin. Um, chin height. Chin, chin protrusion. See out here, if the chin sticks out this much, this is a lot for a chin. It'll help you making older faces. But this is the usual average, I guess, when we draw chins right along here. Sorry if you can hear my ram, it's going crazy. But you see it's one of the bright areas. But there is a general beard going around here. And other than these areas, that whole area is dark. So right under the lip, the sharpness of the of the nose shadow is really necessary here. I'm not sure if it was there in the area. Yeah, there's a pretty sharp shadow right under the nose. All right, and the same thing. You're not going to use the shadow that describes the eye socket as the same shadow describing the nose. The nose is a real, a real limitation. Where here, this is just a gradual depth. Here, it's a really spiky valley. It's like the edge of the nose and then plop all the way down to the lip. So this shadow here is darker, almost as dark as these because it's a real edge, where here it's more gradual. So don't use the same values as to describe different levels. Everyone write that back to me. Don't use the same values to describe different levels, different altitudes in the face, in the geography of the face. Remember this is one light source and it's a really close up light source like a lamp or a glowy tree or something or a, a moon, but in the sunlight it would be much more bright and way less blacks. You also get secondary light sources. And on into your day four, by day four typically, I know I haven't really been guiding you guys around the, the basics of the 14 day challenge, um, uh, because I am I used to do it for free and it was really, really time consuming. Now I only offer it in the private tutoring, but I, I, I wish I had more time to just really go over the 14 day challenge and mediate every single one that goes on. But by day four, you guys should be trying some more secondary light sources, some different words, or I say words because I don't have any other word for it, but different values, different uh, altitudes, trying to mess around with um, cast shadows and different temperatures of cast shadows, different directions of cast shadows by both the secondary and a primary light source, all of that stuff. That's what the 14 day challenge is all about. Studying form, but on the, on the landscape of a face. So that you learn how to draw a face better and you learn about fundamentals way better as well. Okay. What I do with every single 14 day challenge is I do this. I get the darken and I just darken the entire light areas. Every single one. Actually, I'm going to do it on a whole new level. Layer, I mean. I'm just going to darken everywhere. And I'm only going to erase only where my reference tells me to erase, which is this on switch. This this line 
and this circle, this, I mean this C, this up, upside down C. Those are the only areas I erase. So my mouse is only going to hover these areas. If it doesn't get brighter, it means your image itself is not bright enough, but... The nose should be one of the brightest areas. See how the nose is spiked all the way up? It's almost as bright as the forehead because it sticks out. It's got an altitude to it. See how far out it sticks? So it's going to catch more light. The forehead, yeah, it's going to catch light, but this is going to catch more light than any other part of the face. <clears throat> okay, and then the chin. So only areas that I darken are the areas that are not inside this on switch, this this massive map of light, the way the light is traveling across. And the opposite of the cave is just, I call it the pearl or the, or the sphere, which is just building the light. It's exactly the same thing. The brush shrinks as you go, but with a brighter color instead of a dark color or a dark value. You get a chance here to cast the shadow off the lips. So if you're not studying enough in grayscale, you're not learning any of this stuff. There's a reason why I kept Portrait Studio as a grayscale. It's because I'm really, I'm on, a, I'm on a campaign to promote as much grayscale work from you guys as possible. If the, if the pros are using grayscale, if the pros are having trouble with their value uh, maps, how, how can you expect a beginner or someone who isn't well into their craft to p play with color? You know, it's, you can play with it, you can play with it, but you can't create with it just yet play with it if you want to just mess around with color one day and just have fun but when you're really like in those study hours that you spend time on remember that you need to be studying in grayscale to make the most of your time the shadows on either side of the nose really shouldn't be this dark this girl right here she's like a fawn type like you don't find faces like this um i wonder where the uh eye hood you can make asian faces too isn't that awesome so beautiful, I love Asian face. But is it called the glabella? Yeah, this thing. Glabella depth. So let's take a look what happens when I push it all the way in. Yeah, it's much darker in between. And these eyes here are really, really unique. They're very like a Mongolian face, yeah? So beautiful. Um, you can zoom in as well, you just have to exit the camera. You just press Q or my right here. So this whole area needs to be bright instead of dark. So instead of bringing the shadow on either side of the nose, just bring the brightness. The brightness will do the work. And this right here, this is the devil. You don't need this much white. Damn. Just need a little bit. And again, just like I read from my reference, I'm just traveling across that area. Building the highlights only where they're really happening. And I'm not sure if you're going for an Asian eye. I'm really not entirely sure. I'll show you how to do one anyway. Basically, an Asian eye is an eye without a, a crease. It's the opposite of a crease. Instead of having a valley, it's just one big mountain. I'm going to use darken here. I always use darken because it doesn't touch my values as I'm working. It li really lets me build up slowly and gradually. But an Asian eye really is just, yeah, the opposite of a Caucasian eye, obviously. But form-wise, it's just the opposite. It's a, instead of a valley, it's just a, a hill. Just like this. And now if you want to throw in that, that dark lash line, you can. And the crease, if there is one, is really, really low. The crease for an Asian eye is really low. Just down here somewhere really close. I remember one time in high school I was putting makeup on my friend and I, I didn't know how to put makeup on an Asian eye. It takes like a whole extra bit of training to put makeup on an Asian eye and ended up putting eyeliner on her and when she opened her eyes the eyeliner was up here because her, her eyes are hooded. <laughs> I'll never forget that. So that's why I knew, yeah, there's no crease. I just never, I never always overlooked it. There's a little bit of light over here. Okay, so we're slowly building the highest point. And after this, if I'm painting this personally, I will again go get a new layer, get on darken, and just keep going. I darken everything 
one last time and erase only where I need. It's such a specific, detailed method. You really have to take your time. And you have to read your reference. If you're not reading your reference, you're not getting the most of the language that you're trying to speak with, which is the language of grays, the language of the color without the color, which is the value, the language of light. Light is still an amazing thing to observe when you remove the, the color from the formula. It's just still an amazing thing, the way it reacts with hard surfaces and soft surfaces and reflective surfaces. So that's why you have to work in grayscale, so you can experience light in that beautiful version of itself without color. So you can learn to paint with that. And this entire, see the, the temple? the entire temple, the entire side view. So the eye, the, the face is in four quarters, one, two, three, and four. And these pieces here are the cube. They, they, they point out to different areas. So we have to make sure that these areas re respect that. I mean, when we paint them, we paint them as if they are fading off into the sides. And this applies to every 14-day challenge. I know every single one of you are making these mistakes. These aren't mistakes that are easy, you know, weigh into you. If you're seasoned, then you'll learn to fight against these mistakes as you paint. But this is a challenge even professionals face, making sure that you're using a very consistent language in your values. So let me get rid of this stuff and show you the before. And this is with building values very, very slowly. Oh, whoopsie, I haven't finished with the dark spots. So just zooming in with the exact same method I used before. We're slowly bringing in the darkest dark. It's okay if you're bleeding over the edge, you can just clean it. And then that edge needs to be super clean. In fact, it needs to be not only clean, but a little bit bright because there's secondary light source shining on the bottom of the nose this way. If I show you guys when I zoom out. Just here, just beneath the nose, it gets a little bright. It's because the nose is oily and shiny. Okay, and then the dark is dark on the lips using the very edges, or if the mouth is open just a little. And again, we're slowly introducing the cave and combining the shadow of that edge of the mouth with the rest of the beard. Remember that the edges of the lips are always blurry. They don't just, you know, it's not lip liner. If you're painting all the time with makeup, you know you're having a, a bad time. Sorry, it's not dark. Okay, so just like here, slowly building up the darkest dark. And on this area, you can see that little white right here above the lip? That's because it sticks out as well. So it's like hill, valley, hill, valley, hill, valley, hill, valley. If you just get all these hills and valleys in the right spots with the face facing forward, it will always make sense. It'll have a good language going. Just make sure that you don't use the same word for different kinds of valleys. And you guys just saw why that's important. I'm going to reassess the words right now, reassess my own work. I want to make sure the nose is one of the brightest areas. It's oily, it sticks out. The forehead also needs to be a little brighter. along here. Also brighten the, no the the eyebrows because in a hooded eye usually there's sparse hair and it's really reflective as you go up. And then just like I showed you before in the cave I'm slowly building up. The eyes aren't really realistic right now. They're, they're lacking a little bit. Um, I think what you need to do is uh, look up some good references. Diagrams of an eye. Not another painting or a reference of an eye. Look up a diagram of an eye. Can anyone explain why a diagram of an eye is better than a reference of an eye? What does the diagram do for you as the student? So before, after. See how we're building up the highest point? Where here it felt really flat. All your values are just beside each other instead of growing out of each other. That's what you want to do. You want to make a 3D looking ass face. <laughs> 3D, always think in 3D. What does it mean with 3D? It means you're working on the Z axis. So if you're piling the values on each other, you're piling them along the Z axis, the very same Z axis that we know and love. 
So I'm piling it up and I'm getting a 3D look. All I need to do is clean out the edges because matter ends after a certain point. Atoms stop and we get a 3D looking object. Right, but if you're always thinking 2D, the way you shade, and I know some of you are guilty of this, some of you shade like this, no matter what you're doing, you just shade from side to side. You're always going from one side to the edge instead of piling the values on top of each other. That's how you make a face pop out. So you see how you're blending side by side from side to side instead of, I don't see any areas where you're building up form, maybe just only here. But this isn't even a, a hill, this is a valley. I don't see any piling up of values here. You have to stack them so you can get that 3D look. I'm not sure if you were going for Asian, but my version is Asian. Um, it gives you the structure function relationship. Excellent, beautiful, confused biochemist. It gives you the, the function, how it blinks. So if your eyes are always droopy, it means that the way you see an eye, when I say eye, you see this instead of seeing the ball and then seeing the way the eyelids wrap around that ball. Actually, at a certain point, the side of the ball is visible. You see the way they can blink, which one can blink more, which one is bigger with the bigger lashes, that's the one that can move more, the way the pupil works. So if you look at a diagram, it's better than looking at a flat image or painting of it or a photo of it because a photo is just the, you know, the stage, you know, it's, it's not what's behind the stage. You want to look at something that lets you see what's behind the stage. And that's what a diagram offers. So if you do find yourself having a lot of trouble painting eyes, look up a diagram of an, any diagram, Google it. You'll learn to understand it better. You'll start painting around that diagram. You know, stare at the diagram for a couple hours. <laughs> You'll, trust me, you won't forget it. Maybe not a couple hours, maybe a couple minutes. When I was a kid, there is this guy. Um, we used to visit their family, and he used to draw really, really well. He was, like, way older than me. And I was like, how would you get to draw so good? He was pulling my leg, but I still did it like an idiot. He's like, stare. Stare at something for three days, four days. Just stare at it, and then you'll learn how to draw it. I didn't realize he was joking. I thought he was serious, like because I think basically he he didn't know how to explain. To, I was like five. He didn't know how to explain to me how a still life study works. You know, just sitting there and looking at the thing and trying to capture the light and shit. So he just said, "Stare at it for days until you memorize it," which makes no sense. But I did it anyway. I think I learned a couple things from it, but I'm not sure if it was a waste of time or not. Every area that looks up that you see from the side view as looking up, one, two, three, four, five, all of these areas get illuminations. Anywhere that looks away from the light, so the light's like, hey baby, what's up? And it's like, oh, hey baby. But down here it's like, yeah, fuck you light, fuck you, fuck you light, I don't need you. These are the areas that get dark. <laughs> Just remember that narrative, okay? <laughs> don't judge me. <clears throat> um, you used to do that. What do you mean by piling the values? I mean that you are going to bring one value, or either it's a light or a dark shade, and you're building it up on top of itself. So one, whoops, one, two, three, four, and we're shrinking the brush. And look how it looks like a sphere. It looks like a big ball of like a big white pimple. It's a whitehead. <laughs> okay, it just needs to be popped. <clears throat> because what's happening is we're building along a z-axis. So that's what's happening is that we're, we're building a three-dimensional object. Before you're shading side to side, here we're shading outward. And that's why I'm always going down and darkening again because I can always, always build it up way slower, way more carefully. and um, placing the highlights only where they need to be makes the face feel more 3D. And this feels more 3D than this because we've built up. And we've used our values where they belong. So remember to do that for your 14 day challenge or else you really will, you really will have a hard time. Um, pushing the f day 14, day 13, you're gonna have a really hard time. Finding a difference between day 11 and day 13 is, is gonna, there's gonna be no difference. <clears throat> you have to find a difference. Um, let's see what everyone's saying. 
<clears throat> My left screen cannot be trusted. Shadows are your haters. Give them some shade to sleep under. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I don't if I don't brand the image in your brains, you don't remember it. So remember the zit, guys. <clears throat> um, just sitting there staring at trying to catch the light. Shit. <laughs> um, let me see what everyone's saying. Um, yeah. So there we go. I'm done. Uh, there's another one here that's been doing, another person that's been doing a 14 day challenge. It's amazing. I love your brushwork. I love the face. It's got such a pouty ass cute face. I love it. Um, only issues are you're going to be stuck with the big eye look. And if you want to be a versatile artist, you want to get the most out of your 14 day challenge, you have to learn to challenge this dependency on the big eye. Oh my god, it's Harry Potter. No, even with the big eyes, because that guy's got humong humongous eyes. But yeah, um, let's dark. I mean, let's shrink this. What happens when you shrink an eye is shrink it into the average. So I'm not saying, um, you know, just like you know, draw that Americanized anime face. If you guys know what I'm saying, um, really just shrink it to the average where it's still beautiful. Like if someone had this face in the real world, they'd be a model. I mean, you don't get away with this kind of proportion in the real world. You're noticed. So what I want to teach you is learning that basic gen genderless kind of perfect face that isn't dependent on anime beauty, that is, that is f grounded by realistic beauty. So look at this eye right here. It looks very realistic. Look at the eyes before. Very, very cartoon influence. A lot of cartoon. It's still beautiful. It's still cute as fuck, but you, cute as fuck isn't going to get you jobs later. Uh, it might get you a couple jobs, but not every job. What if you have to paint that old burly man? Um, you know, that old burly mercenary and you just have to paint him in that one freelance commission you got and all you can paint is girls. What are you going to do? You have that over-dependency of eyes to deliver a perfect face. You're not going to know what to do when you shrink the eye. Might as well start now, cut, nip it in the bud and um, remember that, oh, I got rid of the liquify. Remember that real faces have uh, a lot more balanced, balanced anatomy. Let me do this again because I got rid of the history. <clears throat> so, shrinking the eyes slowly. This can be both a girl and a boy face. It doesn't matter. That's the thing with these kind of like cherubin faces. Is they, they're applicable as long as it's not post 30s. <laughs> Actually, post, post 15, like post teens. Okay, so I'm trying to get rid of that expression because remember in my expressions video, I really try to like make it known that eyebrows carry expressions, period. Eyebrows do all the work. Alright, so before, kind of distressed cute face after very, very normal. Now, this is what I want, want your 14 day challenge to look like. I want to see some build up as well. You are definitely piling, which is really, really good. It means you're well into your way. Look at how you piled this high highlight over its surrounding. Very, very good. You're working along the z-axis. This face is a very beautiful read. The eyes were just a little bit too big. I'm sure other people told you this. Another issue here is that the nostrils are slits instead of cavities. They need to be open like recesses. So, or else this person won't breathe. And if the, if the nose was tipped down in a way where we're not seeing the entire thing, we'd see a little bit of circular bits at the end anyway. And instead of bringing in a darker shade, this is dark enough as is, I'm just going to lighten and make what was dark seem darker than it was before. Because now it's beside a lighter shade. So there's, there's that way of bringing in dark spots by lightening everything up around it. And then the edge. Really, really important. The septum also casts a shadow. It has a little bit of a of a side. Like if you look at the septum here, let me try to find um, where the septum is. Nose height, nose width. Nose, 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 nose. <clears throat> nose tip. Yeah, right here. You see when the nose tips down. Usually all noses have a little bit of this. When they tip down and they have this kind of 
bit. This is when we bring in that shadow. This is a kind of a pig nose, but right here is most the average, most average nose. So this is why we have to bring in the shadow. If the nose was a pig nose, there would never be a shadow down here because there's no septum drooping down from the side like other noses. Okay, and then the final thing is these dots, these dot sides of the edges of the lip. You need to make them gradients, you need to make them gradual. You need to show how the lips fold around the fat. Just like this. And the edges of the lip, I'm going to bring my blur smudge brush, smudge brush, my scatter smudge, and um, just smudge the edges because unless they're wearing really, really dark lipstick, a nude lip, which is what you should be studying in a 14 day challenge, is really uh, very, very fuzzy on the edges, not that sharp. Okay, so let's do a before and after. Before, after. Size of the eyes is a bit excessive. The nostrils don't really read as functioning nostrils. These things stick with you for the rest of your life if you don't fix them. And when you get better and better, trust me that it's going to get harder and harder to draw. Uh, because harder and harder to improve because it's going to be this constant stress of keeping up the, the fundamentals and trying to push your knowledge. That's why, it's, I'm not going to lie to you, it's going to get harder to draw and it's going to get harder to improve as you go. So try to take care of as much as you can at this point. Sink in as much knowledge as you can. At least just a topical discovery of the rule. Instead of having to discover it years from now where you're well into your technique, well into your blending and suddenly you have to teach yourself how to stack values instead of lay them beside each other. <clears throat> All right. Um, penguin nose. I'm sorry if my voice is starting to blow out. I, I do want to go in for another th uh, 30 minutes because I, I didn't do lessons last week. <coughs> but my voice is not going to last. Um, okay. All right. Uh, this is this is your latest one. And I wanted to talk about this one because, I, again, I want to nip this in the bud before it gets worse. Uh, you should not be using this word and this word for these different kinds of dark spots. All right, you're still, doing, you're still doing the slit nose, be careful with that, but this word right now, which is, the word is 202020, is used very, very close to 282828. These are way too neighboring, they're getting way too friendly. All right, and this is not possible. This is not a cavity, this is a neck, and it has multiple surfaces reflecting on each other diffusing this entire business right here. That neck shadow should not have been that dark. That was way too dark, my friend. All right, the skin skin is a light thing and it's a translucent thing. It's impossible for it to reach that dark in this kind of room unless someone brought in paint and painted her neck. But again, be careful with the eyes. I trust, trust me, the face will still look amazing if you just shrink the eyes just a little bit. The face will still look beautiful. It'll still look awesome. We'll still read beauty if, if the eyes are just a little bit smaller. And it'll be a more accessible, more accessible realism. Because this face was deviating way out of um, familiar anatomy. Okay, before, after. See how beautiful the face is still. And those big eyes made you raise the eyebrows all the way up and made you raise the head up. And you got a long face. You want to learn the generic, beautiful you kind of face after the 14 day challenge. That's what it's all about. Learning about what makes you, like the you face, the specific to your style. So before, you cannot use the same word for a dark spot as, this, as the word for a mild shadow cast by the neck. Impossible. <clears throat> All right, so there's another update coming on Portrait Studio. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to show it to you guys, but um, I'm gonna keep going with these challenges. All right, so this one had a bit too much of a dip in the septum. I'm gonna straight into liquify. I'm gonna show you some things that you should be working on. The septum shouldn't be so dark. 
we should be seeing a little bit more of an open cavity for the nose. Remember guys, if you don't know how to draw a nose, it means you don't know how to read a cavity. And if you don't know how to draw a cavity, you really don't know how to draw or sculpt yet. A nose is the biggest challenge for an artist. Who here has trouble drawing a nose? I know all of us do. Um, and it's because we're not capable of carving yet. You should be carving with your brush. You shouldn't be outlining and blending. And the nose is the biggest challenge for any artist, hands down. It's, it's worse than the eyes. The eyes should be the thing you learn the most, yeah, but whoopsie. A nose is the, the biggest challenge. It was my biggest challenge. To make the eyes feel like they're more and like a part of the portrait, you want to make them have a, a focused gaze. It'll intrigue your audience more. You, you, yes, uh, everyone has a trouble, trouble drawing an eye, I mean drawing a nose because it is the, the, the biggest test of your ability to create a cavity with just va values and no outlines. I mean just saying it hurts. <laughs> just me saying it starting to just give me a headache. Because of all the sculpting and the blending and the erasing and the diffusing and then the bringing more dark spots and it's just going to get more and more difficult and you get less chances to erase and you want, don't want to paint over what you've been working on and the nose is like a, a black hole of the face if you mess that up you're gonna be on that for hours that's why I try to do the nose like I render it fully before I fin finish the rest of the face fully but let's take a look at the before after a little less relatable before let me let's say for before Okay, so the septum was a little droopy. It didn't feel feminine. You don't want to learn and depend on that kind of nose. You want to learn the generic basic beauty nose. <clears throat> the eyes were really, really um, zoned out. And the head was more round than it was square. It needs to be more square. The bone structure brings a rigidity and a geometry to the face. And that's what we want to learn. Again, please, if you're going to use a really, really light shade for the nose, you don't need any more shades on the side of it. You need very very little starting from the from the eye socket. You can use those slight side shades here that come out of the eye. Just like this. But that's it. You really don't need any more for us to know and read this. Um, another issue that we saw last time, see I know, I know that you guys share the same issues, is these dots, these dots for edges. This is not sculpting. This is a line dependency. You need to slowly, slowly enter that dark spot. Slowly kind of just integrate it into the rest of the flesh. <clears throat> so yeah, my speech from earlier really wasn't an attempt to make you guys stop talking to me. It was more of a, a way for me to tell you guys how you should be talking to me, as you would any other person, as you would your mom. All right, I'm I'm your mom. I'm so proud of saying that for some reason. That's so weird. I'm so maternal lately, but yeah, I'm your mom, guys. If you wouldn't say nasty shit and send me love songs like every single day <laughs> if you send, if wouldn't send your mom that then you, sh you shouldn't send it to me alright I'm your mama the dots lowers head in shame yes you're all guilty of I'm guilty of it sometimes I get so lazy between you and me I cheat and add in lipstick <laughs> Because it means I only have to graduate the uh, the values on one side instead of the inside of the lip. Right now I'm just, again, using this exact reference. I'm trying to build the nose shadow. This, of course, is a more universal light. The entire forehead area needs to be more bright. It's catching light. Your forehead was so dark. I'll show you in a sec what it was like. <clears throat> okay. Side of the eyes. So let me show you something. These kinds of eyebrows, um, I know these two people that have these kinds of eyebrows, and it's not a good look. 
Um, actually, I probably shouldn't mention these two people because then they'd hate me for life for saying that they have bad eyebrows. But I should show you because for educational purposes to show you the equivalent. Okay, so Fergie, <laughs> if you guys know about this person, um, she has eyebrows that have a really deep root in her in her eye socket. So it looks like she's always angry. All right. If you look at someone like, um, I'm not sure how to spell her name. If you have a nice kind of separation between where your eyebrow starts and where kind of the distance between these two, so they're not like connected completely, if you have that kind of release, let's look up another face. I think she does have that deep root, deep rooted brow. A little bit, kind of, but you don't want to have that. And that's kind of the symbol of beauty. When you have a uh, Features that aren't blocking each other out. Features that aren't in the way of each other. So if her standard face, if her basic face, if her uh, expressionless face, her neutral face is this angry, then we're, we're reading that off of your image. You have to learn the most um, easy on the eyes neutral in the 14 day challenge. That's what it's all about. You can, of course, learn how to draw organic, you know, real faces, but you want to learn something faster than the other thing. And if it's a, it's a study, go by all means copy the likeness completely, but this isn't a study of likeness, is it? There's a reason why I say no references. I really want to challenge your ability to memorize form and, and uh, perfect what you already know. Right, so before after I kind of just released it. I'm not sure if I did a good job because liquify was grabbing the eye as well. I didn't want to mess up the circular shape of the eye which you have very nicely. But right along here there would be a little extra light. So don't let the features block each other out. Everyone write that back. A beautiful face really has like a, a balance in the distance between the features. Usually with the, the triangle involved. The eyebrows shouldn't block out the beauty of the eyes. The eyebrows shouldn't umbrella the eyes. They should just be there very, very helpfully against the sun. All right, so before, so that septum, that whole droop is a very specific feature and likeness, very specific kind of genetic signature. Where here we're learning a more applicable face to all kinds of all kinds of uses. That's what that 14 day challenge is art about all about. <laughs> I have bitch face eyebrows too. I might show you guys my face just to show I have a little bit of a bitch face. I mean I'm sure you hear it in my voice. I don't have bitch face eyebrows in the distance because I have a massive distance between my eyes and my eyebrows. Um, my eyebrows are really high on my face, <laughs> uh, but uh, when I get, like when I draw, I have like pure stern ass face, like, don't talk to me face. Don't let the features block each other out. Yeah, that's all it means, all right? So before, you see that nose? After. Okay, thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.